Hello, and welcome to this Topics in Depth video. My name's Craig Barton, and I'm delighted to be joined by my co-host, Joe Morgan. Hello, Joe. how are you? Hi, Craig, I'm great, thank you. Fantastic. Now, this Topics in Depth video is kindly sponsored by AQA, and I've just got a little message from AQA to read out here. AQA is not responsible for the content or any third-party material in this video, save for the use of its past examination questions. And one other notice from me, Joe is gonna show you loads of amazing exam questions, resources, activities. If you're excited to be used those with your colleagues or your students, if you just look below the video, there'll be an opportunity to download this presentation where you'll get all the resources. Right, Joe, I have not one, not two, but three questions for you. So question one, what is Topics in Depth all about? Question two, how would you suggest a teacher uses this Topics in Depth video? And question three, the big one, what topic are we going deep into today? Right, well, this is part of a series of presentations, CPD sessions that I deliver. Um, and the idea is that before you're teaching a topic, you could watch one of these to help you prepare to teach it. And it will give you a really deep understanding of the topic so you can then teach it in depth. So when you get to teaching it, you're not just skimming the surface, like you really know this topic well, and therefore your teaching should be better as a result. Um, it's something where either a teacher can watch it themselves and, and it will benefit them um, just before they start teaching. But actually, I think this is a really well used as a department resource. So for example, a head of maths could use, um, choose a topic that's coming up soon and then show this in a department meeting or use the slides in a department meeting to make sure the whole department kind of knows exactly um, where the best resources are, their subject knowledge is, is ready to go, they know everything there is to know about this topic and then everyone in the department will go into the topic with confident teaching. Um, so hopefully useful for maths teachers um, and a really good CPD resource and with loads of resource links as well so lots that teachers can use here. Uh, we have a bit of a niche topic today so something um, where it seems like it's quite a small topic but there is a lot to talk about with this. So today's topic is uh, exact trig values. Wow. So trig values in depth really like tiny little bit yeah, of maths. Yeah okay. Yeah. I'm intrigued how deep we're going to go on this. Okay, go on, tell me more. Right, so this is, and this needs a bit of background to understand why this is something we might want to talk about. Mm. Um, and, you know, you've been teaching a while, so you remember when the new GCSE came I in. Do. And so you'll know that at the time, there was a bit of a surprise on the new curriculum, but teachers who are new to teaching might not kind of know the background, mm. so I'll just sort of talk you through that to start with. So here's, here's my timeline. <laughs> oh, it's God, very, like very... It. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, t technical yes, <laughs> and uh, definitely not to scale. Okay. So the background is that in 2013, um, Michael Gove was Education Secretary and he announced GCSE reform. Okay. Um, at that point, we were all teaching a specification that had been around for a long time yeah. with a few little tweaks along the way, but we were all pretty much knew what we were doing. And, and very happy with it. Yes, know? we were happy it's with fine. it. It was easy, easy yeah, times, happy days. <laughs> yeah. And then um, in 2015, um, we had the first teaching of the new specification yep. that then came out. Um, and that was when we started teaching it to year 10 yeah. um, and then if you remember the first exams for that were in 2017. And it's worth saying that it was a bit of confusion around that time about, you know, what's changed, what hasn't changed. And yeah, so on, yeah, it was it was a, a time where and it was when I first sort of um, started um, talking to other teachers on social media and at conferences. And all we talked about was the new GCSE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talked about um, what's on it, what's new, how are we going to teach those new things, the increased level of challenge. Yes. Lots of stuff moved from A level down to GCSE. Um, and so and also the original spec um, specimen papers were really very challenging yeah. and we're all in a bit of a panic about it um, and now we're we're all got a lot of experience with it and it's all settled down yes. um, but of course um, we had COVID in the middle of it so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we yeah. only had um, a couple of years of new GCSE and then GCSEs were cancelled and yep. it was all um, all a bit of a, a gap in what we were doing um, and now we are um, this kind of six years post GC, the new GCC mm. being launched, but actually we haven't really had six years of it. Yes. So it's been um, it's been an interesting time, and it's and it's interesting that still, even though it's quite a long time since it was all launched, some teachers still aren't um, massively familiar with the new yep. curriculum. Yeah, yep. And only last week I was talking on Twitter about. Um, Graph transformations? Did you yeah, see me talking about that? Yeah, I did see And, yeah, and I, I was did. saying how the, the new specification, and we've known this since 2015, or even before that, I think 2014, we knew that 
uh, graph transformations wouldn't have stretches. It would yeah. only have translations and reflections. And then last week on Twitter, there were lots of teachers saying to me that they weren't aware of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So we are still um, finding our way with, with a new curriculum. And, you know, I suppose once we've all found our way, then we'll get a different <laughs> curriculum. Yeah, so, exactly. um, but, yeah, the reason I talk about this now is because there was um, some changes in the... You know, um, the kind of idea behind memorizing being mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. and um, knowledge. And yes. I'm a big fan of knowing things. I'm a big fan of knowledge curriculums. Um, so it's interesting um, how this particular topic feeds into that. So this was the old GCSE spec. So the one yes. pre-2015. Um, um, and this is the uh, trigonometry content. And just notice it's all higher tier. There was no trigonometry at all on foundation tier. Um, and all of it, um, you know, we've got uh, basically what some teachers might call Sokotoa, yep. um, which is not obviously a thing, but it's, it's a useful way of remembering it, but right angle trigonometry. And then we have um, sine and cosine rule, yes. and we have 2D and 3D problems. And, and essentially that's it. Uh, then we have our new um, spec. Now that looks really messy, so let me just yeah, explain. Yeah, like yeah. the underlining of the commas and stuff is just, is, this, is a, this is a DFE <laughs> document. It, it doesn't look very neat, yeah. so let me explain it. The um, underline stuff is, oh, so stuff in normal type is for yep. all students, but yep. there's none of that here. The underline stuff is for all students, but it's considered to be more challenging, yes. which means that if you're on foundation tier at GCSE, then you'd probably be looking at your sort of very top students being able to do that stuff. So students on a grade four or five should be able to do Pythagoras and should be able to do right angle trigonometry. Yes. And then if you look at that 21 there, yep. know the exact yeah. values for sine theta and cos theta for 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90, and for tan for 0, 30, 45, and 60. And this was one of the big controversies, right? Of the really new big. spec. Like yeah. everyone's like, why the hell's that on foundation? On foundation, yeah. So we'll talk in a minute about reasons, it, reasons that we might not like it being on there. Yep. And we'll come to that, but also, it was, it was also, um, this was new on higher tier as well. So yes. previously, trigonometry was just a calculator topic on, yep. um, on higher tier. And this was something that students didn't actually meet until A-level previously. So this came down from A-level. And I think we were surprised to see it come down to, from A-level mm. down to foundation <laughs> yeah. tier. Like that was, that was quite a, yeah. an interesting move. Yeah. Um, and I think it kind of linked in with the idea of Gove was very keen on um, memorization yes. and knowledge, and this is something that um, kind of fits with that. Yep. Um, but you know, there are that was the main change. I mean, but also it was trigonometry in general Ooh, going down to foundation. But yeah, the, the trig values was the big change. Um, and if you compare them side by side, the language is so interesting because there we've got understanding recalling and using yep. your right your right angle trick stuff and then using the sine and cosine rule but not recalling them because yes. they used to be provided in the exam yeah, of course um, and then the, look how different the spec looks now in terms of the language used no 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 like it's knowledge yeah. knowledge is the key here and also knowing and applying so you need to know the sine rule and you need to be able to use it as a previous you just had to use it um so it's just interesting, a bit of a change in yes. in focus and in GCSE, and that that isn't just maths; that was across the board in, yep. in all subjects. Um, this this is one of the things that Gove talked about at the time. He said memorization is a necessary precondition of understanding. Mm. So he's talking about how, and and I totally understand this from like for example, we know that memorizing say times tables will open up um, bits of maths that students can then easily understand yes. because they haven't got the cognitive load of trying to work out the times tables and also like try and factorize a quadratic without knowing the times tables. Yeah. Like even if you can sort of count your way through them, you can't factorize a quadratic yes. by doing that. So that was one of the things he said, but I kind of feel like the word is wrong there a bit. It's it's not so much memorization that the focus should have been on, but knowledge, which is yeah. which is actually a different thing. It's a subtle difference. Yes, I agree. Memorizing and knowledge. But um so let me show you what I mean by that. So okay. if you look at um this is an old A level question. Um show that sine fifteen equals one quarter root six minus root two. Um now that is um that is a question where Knowing about exact trig values will, will get you into that question, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily, memorizing them makes no difference yes. because with this one, and this is, you know, teachers who haven't taught year 13 might not know the approach to this, but essentially you need to write that sine 15 as um, sine 60 minus sine 45 yeah. or sine 60 minus 45. And then there's basically a formula you can use. Now the formula then was provided in the exam and this was a calculator paper. So you didn't need to know the value of sine yeah. 60, sine 45, but you needed to know that they were a thing yes. that you that yes. was an exact value. 
So this is about, you didn't have to memorize the trig values, but you needed to know they were a thing, and that you needed to know that if you use sine 60 and sine 45, that was gonna give you numbers yes. that you could work with. Yes. So this is where the difference between knowing and memorizing comes in. That like, you, knowing them is helpful, memorizing them, who cares? You've got a calculator in front of you. So it was a, it's a subtle difference, mm, but I mm. think it's, it's, um, it's important to sort of recognize that some some teachers thought that the emphasis on memorization was kind of maybe a little bit misguided. Like, yeah, but, but it's, it's true even with your times tables, right? Yeah. Like, if you memorize six, seven to 42, that's fine. Yeah. But then knowing, once you know that, how to figure out what seven sevens are and do oh, little yeah. tweaks and things, it's, it's all the same. And again, like, we, we'd be similar, wouldn't we, Joe? We, it's very easy to kind of say memorization's bad, blah, blah, blah. But we don't mean that. We mean that yeah. you've got to be able to recall them, but that knowledge has got to be flexible enough that yeah. you've got to take what you know and adapt it. Yeah, and so because on. to me, something like the sine on cosine rule, or say the cosine rule, which is or the quadratic formula, something that's mm. a bit of a hassle to, to yeah, memorize. Yeah, yeah. But once you... If you know it exists and you know when to use it, that's the knowing bit. Yeah, but the yes. memorizing the actual formula is not something that mathematicians think is important. No, that's right. Um, but so I'm totally on board with the knowledge, the idea of knowledge being important yes. and knowing that they're there and knowing when to use them. But the memorizing the actual formula, I think most math teachers would agree that that's not something that we prioritize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so why else? So why learn exact trig values? Because if you look at that A level question, we're not doing that at GCSE, no. and that's a, that's a place where exact trig values is essential. Oh, I, say, I have no idea what you're going to say, by the way, because I, I don't know why, <laughs> why these are important at GCSE. Well, my only reason I've managed to come up with is to <laughs> deepen understanding of trigonometry, yeah. um, and I, I wouldn't yeah. say I wouldn't use that argument for foundation tier, but for higher tier. Perhaps, um, you know, if you're teaching trigonometry, you know, teaching right angle, triangle, and you sort of say, right, Sokotoro, and they yes, just plug numbers in. Yes. But if you start looking at problems where there's some, in a non-calculator exam, perhaps there's, um, and, and when you're deriving the exact trig values, perhaps yeah. there's more understanding being developed. But I haven't really got a good argument See, for yeah. this. Yeah, so, I mean, I agree. Like, it's useful. Knowing sine 30 is a half is useful and interesting when you look at, different triangles that have got the same ratio between, you know, the opposite. Yeah, and that's part. true. That, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And and again, when you look at, it's not quite as, uh, well, it's still interesting looking at like cos 30, but it's like not as nice a ratio to yeah. spot and so on. So I see that. I see for the graphs, but again, that would only be higher. It's quite useful to know each of those kind of key points and yeah. stuff on them. But it just, yeah, I mean, it feels to me, it's foundation isn't the place for this. But Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I think it's, it's it, 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 I can't really see a strong argument for even having them higher tier given that they're not not answering questions like that one I just yeah, showed where you yes, actually need them. Where you need them yeah. But um, yeah, I, I don't think it's the end of the world there, there. It's just the the process of memorizing them seems to be taking up a lot of yes. um, brain space of our students and particularly sort of cramming them at the last yeah. minute. And I'll talk, in a, I'll talk in a minute about how, you know, they shouldn't really need to memorize them if they know how to derive them. But but um, this is the interesting thing, right? This is why we need this topics in depth because it's very easy to kind of almost like either dismiss this topic or kind of approach it in a wrong way that isn't going to be useful for the kids. Yeah. But hopefully we're going to see some. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk about how to we can get a lot of value out of this topic, nice. certainly. Yeah, I need um, it. But yeah, on foundation tiers, my arguments against that would be it has become an exercise in memorization. It doesn't test what we want it to test. So we don't want to test whether they've remembered a table of values. Yeah. But that is what's happening at yeah, foundation. Yeah, of course. Um, I think it's a distraction. There are really important things that foundation tier students need to focus on, like, um, you know, skills, functional skills and numeracy. Yes. Um, and then also some stuff which isn't necessarily functional, but, you know, stuff that actually they have a, they, we need, want them to have a deep understanding of yeah. working with fractions, ratios, yeah. percentages, that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. And this just seems like it's such a minor thing and it's just taken up a load of time. Um, yeah, obviously, a lot of teachers just skip it at foundation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And There's a lot to be said for that, I think. Yeah, definitely, you know. yeah. Um, it leads nowhere <laughs> because, um, <laughs> but you can say that about a lot of math. So it's yeah. not a particularly strong argument because there's a lot of what we teach leads nowhere. Um, but... A higher tier, most of the higher tier leads into A-level maths. Yeah. Like most of it, not all of it. But like, say, for example, constructions doesn't necessarily lead into A-level maths, but perhaps it gives a strong understanding of yeah, uh, geometry. Yeah, it's got a purpose yeah. to it. Yeah. Whereas with, found, and with yeah. foundation tier, a lot of the content leads into um, some courses like core maths or, or yes. just general life skills. Yes, yes. Um, but 
it's literally going nowhere yeah. because they're not having <laughs> to use it for anything else. But then you could argue that with a lot of things. The other, the, but my big kind of problem with it being on foundation is the um, without the knowledge of thirds, it just yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They're, they're memorizing root three over two, but thirds isn't on their yeah. curriculum. Yeah. So, you know, that doesn't make any sense to them. And like, even if you show them, like if you derive, like if you've got one over root three and you say, well, that's the same as root three over three, but I, you don't need to know why exactly. it's the same. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it really doesn't sit well with many It's teachers. the worst way of teaching yeah. maths, right? And uh, yeah, yeah, I do. And I do think that if there was curriculum reform again, I, 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 I think it would go. And I, I don't, you know, it was, it was a little, it was, uh, in most people's opinion, not the best decision to put yeah, it on there. Correct. Um, so there's uh, for AQA, I had a look at oh, when it's nice. appeared. Now, if you look at foundation, originally it was barely ever coming up, but there, yeah. it has come up on the last few. Like, not massive questions, not big mark questions, but yeah, it has come up on foundation. Um, but for higher, almost every time. Yeah, um, yeah, and obviously, yeah. it's always on paper one because it's non calculator. Yes. Um, but yeah, most of the time that is coming up. That's so, interesting that yeah, that and you table. certainly would want to teach it if you were teaching higher tier. You don't want to yeah. skip this because, yeah, it is something that, and sometimes it's a one mark question and sometimes it's a much bigger one, four or five marks. Yep. So let's look at some um, some various things to do with this topic. Oh, yes, so please. the first thing I want to do is look at how it looks on GCSE exams. So we'll look at some example questions. We'll talk a bit about sequence planning and where it might come up in the order of things. Um, then we'll talk about this idea of memorizing versus other things like should they actually, are there ways of memorizing them? Are there alternatives to that? And then we'll look at some resources and problems. Very organized. Looking forward yeah, to this. Let's do yeah. it. So let's look at higher tier. Um, <laughs> Now, I will show you one foundation question, but I'm mainly going to focus on the higher tier AQA questions. And it's really interesting because um, there's such a variety. Exactly, values comes up in okay. two two main different forms. So you'll okay. see what I mean. So I mean that's your kind of that's a foundation question, but yeah. that is um, a, look, it's right at the end of the foundation paper. Yeah. Um, and that is not zero point zero six. Like that, um, randomly, that would have been. Um, 0.25 so like people are <laughs> yeah. guessing very badly there yeah. um but yeah that was um right at the beginning the first ever um new new GCSE exam and no one knew what was going on to there. Be there, does it? No, 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 no. no um oh i'm showing you one more foundation question so that is really similar oh but you know what's lovely about this question uh, you're going to read the bit at the bottom there but can you see a way of doing it without trig it's really like totally don't need trig values here no not off the top of my head so no try point. reflecting like making that that is a nice that's an isosceles triangle. No, it's an equilateral triangle, isn't it? Ah, oh, nice. Yes. Because because the if you if you yeah. doubled that, like you know, not doubled it, it but you know what I mean. Yeah, if you reflected yeah, yeah. it, you'd have a sixty at the top, and that's then all clever. sides are ten, so that x is five. Lovely. So actually, it's been classified as an exact trig values question, and it's not. That's interesting. I mean, it yep. could be. I like that. But yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Anyway, higher tier, very different. So if you look at both these questions, these aren't to do with triangles. Yep. These are to do with thirds. This yes. is third manipulation. Um, but you, in order to do the third manipulation, manipula yeah. manipulation, that's not a word, is it? <laughs> in order to do the third manipulation, <laughs> you yeah, have to um, know the, the trig values. Yeah. So there's an element of memorizing or of deriving course. them to get started on the question. Um, that first one, it says half of the students knew at least one of the values. So a lot of them knew sine 30, which is a half. Yep, yep. And many of them knew all three, but then got the got the manipulation uh, of it wrong. But that, again, that's, we were talking about this in a previous topics yes. in depth. That like if you asked a kid in isolation, question one, what's three over two plus a half? Higher tier, very few are writing four over four, <laughs> yeah. you'd hope. Yeah. But you put it at the end yeah. of a real complex pr process oh, yeah. where they're cognitively knackered. All their attention has been on remembering the trig values, manipulating yeah. this and so on. They've just got nothing left. It happens time and time again mm. that the final step of a challenging multi-step process are mistakes made and teachers think, oh, it's because kids can't add fractions, yeah, but, but it's, it's not. not. They're yeah. just cognitively knackered. And actually, it's similar in the second question then, because look, it says that um, almost a quarter of the students picked up a mark for knowing one exact trick value, but then look, some of them who knew all three omitted the eight yeah, on substitution. That's exactly it. That's exactly yeah, it. Yeah, they're it's literally like, that is no a attention silly left. mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but they're quite big questions, three marks and four marks. Well, I was going to say that. It's, it's not like... I mean, if you had made a tactical decision to say to kids, Let, look, let's not worry about these, mm. it's quite... Chunky yeah. marks to yeah, be given away, it's a lot isn't of marks, it? Yeah, but if you've got a, you know, it's it's right at the end of the paper. But true. Yeah, yeah we, true. They, it's a, it's a lot of marks to say. Oh, we're just going to skip that. Yeah. Um, true. 
that's a answer to that question. So you can see the kind of amount of work needed. There's the memorization, yes. then there's the um, simplifying. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of non-calculator work to do. You can see a lot of students will struggle with that. But look at what it involves. It involves memorizing, mm, yep. it involves substitution, working with thirds, yep. using fractions, yep. multiplying. <laughs> but no, I mean, I'd say no trigonometry, but there's no, there's no, no geometry. No here. geometry at yeah. all, correct. So, you know, we're casting this as trigonometry when actually it's more thirds and number work, isn't it? Like this it is, is a number work question. But also, again, forgive my ignorance here, there's no, like that five sine 30 multiplied by cos 30 multiplied by eight times 30, that isn't anything. Do you know what I mean? It's not, oh, like, yeah, it doesn't represent it's not a calculation yes. that you can yeah, conceptualize. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just a thing to do, right? Yeah, so really it's just, it's a, yeah, we're checking that they can work with numbers yeah. and we're checking their memorization. Um, and that's a kind of similar idea where it's third work and it's nice third work, but it says most students knew one value but then didn't yeah, process them correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're getting a mark normally. Yes. Most students are getting a mark for get, writing yeah. down something. Yes. But that's not that's <laughs> yeah. not what maths is all about. No, so no, we don't, that's no, not no. really what we want to say. But every one of these questions has been at least 25 plus in terms of where it appears on the page. Yes, hasn't yes, it? right yeah. at the end, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's an answer to that. But look, you do end up having to rationalise. There's a lot of third work going on there. Yeah. Um, and it says, um, that's the wow. bit where, look what it says at the end. Some stu uh, of the comment, it says, Yep. Some students said that 2 sine 45 equals sine 90. Yeah, Just that total course. lack of understanding. Yeah. Is that where you've got top right 0 0.97? Is that the average, yeah, the, the mean mark? Four, yeah. yeah, so the most students are getting one mark for just saying one yeah, correct value course, there. Yeah. So this one is slightly different, and I think this requires a little bit more understanding, although still no um, triangle involved yeah, in the question. Yeah. But, you know, in this one, they're having to multiply the sine 60 and the tan 30. Um, and I, I think I've got an answer on here. Yeah, that shows that, that gives you an answer of a half. And then remember this: they then then cos x equals yeah, a half, so yeah, x is yeah, sixty. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's that's pretty challenging. And look, one mark on average again suggests students are just picking up a mark from writing yes. down a correct um, value there. But they, I mean, that you know, that's not just know your exact trig values, but it's also understand the uh, how an inverse trig function works. Like, so. Can you think of a topic that is worse performing? on higher tier than this. Um, it's got to be the worst, hasn't it? I don't, I think there are some, I know that in the past AQA have picked out poorly performing topics and there's been things like bearings and there's like, there's yeah. generally things that come out, but. This has got to be it, I mean, the, the marks are all pretty low, but I think the, just bear in mind, it's new and, you know, I think over the years, gradually it's getting a little bit better. Yeah. Like, so in the first few years of new GCSE, like, it's a disaster. And then just, just picking do, up a few extra marks. Do you think it's, it's the combo that remembering it's hard yeah. and manipulating thirds is hard? Put the yeah. two together, you're in a bit yeah. of trouble, maybe? I, I, it, may, it may just be... I don't know, it's difficult to know whether, the, I, I think a lot of them are rem remembering them wrong. Yeah. So they're remembering cos, uh, sorry, <laughs> sine 30, and then the, the third ones, they're just confusing just, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's some of that, but we'll talk about the memorization in a minute okay. and what's going wrong okay. with that. But yeah, I, I think it is probably one of the worst it's gotta topics. Be. It's gotta be. Yeah. Um, more than half of students got one mark. Again, it's that, it's that just getting one value yeah, right. Yeah. Now this is where I'm a bit happier because I am seeing, yeah. and I'm not, I don't dislike the other questions. They're <laughs> no. good. They're good number work. But now I'm seeing geometry. Yeah. This question is particularly um, wow. challenging. I've used this with my further maths yep. class. <clears throat> so this is because if you look at this first, they are given the area, so they work backwards from the area Whoa. with half a b sine c to work out yeah, x, x. But they have to know <laughs> sine <laughs> sixty, which is root three over two. Wow. Then once they've got that, they use the cosine rule, yeah. and then they're working with cos 60, Jeez. which is a half. Look at average score for this as well. Hey? Yeah, it's pretty low, but it's um, that is a, definitely a challenging question. It and like, it, I, I love that question, um, but obviously teachers normally love the really tricky questions. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I really like it. Um, and the thing is, if you look at the, um, so it says various incorrect Pythagorean <laughs> <laughs> methods. I mean, that's not... You know, few questions, few students scored any marks on this yeah, question. Yeah, that's hard. And when you look at the workings as well, look, you end up having to um, simplify root three, two, five. Wow. So even the third at the end is um, yep. is a tricky one. Like, but any any student who's getting that right, they've got a deep understanding, and they yeah, they can do A level. Yeah, we we'll welcome them. And it's towards the end of the paper. This yeah. what this what those questions. Yeah, are for. and they, yeah, well, this is picking out those grade nine students. And what and you know, we know that some students can get a grade nine with quite a lot of gaps. Yeah. But I'd like to see it that if a student gets this, they get a grade nine. You yeah. know, that means that they really they're yeah, really good yeah, at maths. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, 
And then just another one, which again, I really like this one. So this is, um, again, an AQA question from um, November 21. And this mm, is, nice. um, again, this is really challenging stuff. Yes. Um, the, the, the average score was 0.61. I guess a lot of students, again, are may. The thing is, on this one, it's not as straightforward as picking up a mark for writing down a correct no, value because they, don't know, the what, they yeah. don't know what to write down. That's exactly um, right. But it's an area question. So maybe writing down sine 60 might get them a mark because they can see its area, so they might know it's yeah. half AB sine C. Um, but yeah, again, really challenging question. I love that. I think it's a really, really nice question to, to pick out your grade nine students. Yeah. Um, with this one, it was uh, students who used the sign formula and knew how to find sign 60. Um, you know, that if they know how to do that, then they kind of got there. Yes. Um, but, you know, a lot of them are trying to use half base times height. They see that there's a triangle. They see its area. Um, but there's all sorts of wrong stuff happening. Just on a wider point, I mean, I love it when AQA do this, right? The strongest response is weakest. What a useful resource. Oh, that yeah, is. definitely. Just, uh, the, um, the, um, I, I I wish I had, I wish I, I should be better at looking at them. Yeah. You know, I look at them when I make these presentations and I think, well, I should always every year yeah. make a point of reading all of the examiner comments. And it's a great CPD session with a department. And to share with the kids as well. It's just yeah. Oh, yeah, stuff. yeah, brilliant really stuff. good, yeah. So let's talk nice. about sequencing, yeah? yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. So we're going to say, um, like, how? Sh what order do we teach things in? Now, I'm talking about maybe how a typical school does it, but every school is different. Yep. And if you talk, think about triangles and angles and triangles and just generally working with um, right angle triangles and beyond, you've got your angles and triangles in year seven, and then you've got most schools doing Pythagoras in yep. year eight or year nine. Oh, nine Some yep. schools leave it till year nine. And then you've got your right angle trigonometry normally coming in year nine. And actually, it is on the key stage three oh, curriculum. It does my head it, in, though. It's, God, it shouldn't be there. Oh, no, we like it. And why do you think oh. it shouldn't be there? You should you should want it gone, Joe. Well, because I like going to death. Depth. You do, you, well, you do a little brush of it, a little brush of it. No, no, we, well, we, we spend three weeks on it in year nine. But if you but don't... think what you could do with those three weeks. Think how much deep yeah. you can go on the other stuff and yeah. then have a real good time with it in year 10. No, because then, the only problem with that is I don't want them to see it for the first time in year 10 because you've got so much trig at GCSE that I don't want to introduce right angle trig and then put all this other stuff in too quickly. Whereas the way we do it in year nine is that then when we come back to it in year 10, they've seen right angle trig before, so they've already got an understanding of it and then we go into more depth and we do it again. Like now, I like it being in. Um, we do Pythagoras in Year Eight, which is a great time for Pythagoras. They all that lovely. They can do everything. Yeah, they need no, for I'm it. okay with Pythagorean in Year Eight. I just, oh, I'd love Trig not to be there. I just, I just see it done really poorly in Key Stage Three. Yeah. And the and the problem there is, it's so rushed because you've got yeah. to get everything else in. Year Ten, the kids hate it already. Whereas you could yeah, really take so your I time. Yeah, so I think you know we're doing it really well at my school. I'm afraid we are. We are like when we get to it in year ten, um, we can do one recap lesson on it. They they know how to work out a right angled trig question. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, but we're giving it enough time. You know, we are we're giving it three weeks. Like we don't our curriculum at my school is designed so we don't repeat topics. You know, we teach them in depth first time round, yeah. and it gives us enough time to get through things. But yeah, we do it. Um, halfway through year nine and we okay. think it fits really well there right. but yeah i do know i know a lot of schools don't do it there they do it in year 10. um then i think year 10 could be more right angle trigonometry so going into greater depth and at that point putting your bearings yes. in and maybe your three-dimensional yep. and then year 11 could be the right angle trig trig graphs and exact values However, um, not necessarily. Like at my school, we actually do all of that in year ten. So we do the non, wow, we do the okay. cosine and sine rule in year ten, um, and then we do trig graphs in year eleven. But yeah, we're we're pretty much doing all of trig in year ten because the beginning bit is recap because we've done it in year nine. <laughs> but um, if you look at um, this, is when people teach things, and um, what we've got yeah, is this is good. This is a good slide. Oh, thank you. This is a you survey. Was with Twitter poll. Yeah, no, yeah. it was it was a actual like form survey. Yeah, I did a proper okay, survey yes. about key stage three teaching yeah. when I was I was um, thinking about how in depth people go on things. It's really and good, I had seven hundred ninety one responses, and it was there were quite a lot of questions where I was asking what year you sort of teach the main bit of right, this. Okay, yes. And um, it was interesting. See that big green bit on right angle trig at the top I do right. See it, yeah. Yeah, that means people are not teaching it until yeah. year ten. We are illegal, legally obliged. Illegal. Yeah, it's illegal. We're a league. We're league. We have to teach. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could argue maths don't. I mean, schools in multi academy trusts. I'm not yeah, sure. If you know, 
Of, Ofsted, and we don't teach things for Ofsted, but when they come to your school, they'll be looking to see that you meet the requirements yeah. of the national curriculum, and this is on the national curriculum. Arrested, if not. Arrested, Attention. yeah. People shouldn't be leaving that till year Jeez. 10. Um, but yeah, it was um, interesting that obviously very few schools introducing it in year it's eight. Really Although when I worked at a grammar school, we did it in year eight. We did Pythagoras in year seven, we did Trig in year eight. But um, yeah, most schools doing it in year nine. But yeah, interesting that some are leaving it till year 10 when it is on the curriculum, yeah, national curriculum. Good, People really need to know point. their national curriculum really well. Um, when you get to GCSE, the question is how you sequence it. Um, and if you're going to, this is, I'm going to show you how you can maybe do it all in one chunk, but some people will split it between okay. the, uh, okay. 10 and 11. So you might want to start with a recap of thirds before you start this unit oh, on trigonometry because it is, to. yeah, it is going to come up in exact trig values and that might need a lesson or two. Yep. Like when I did this, um, I gave my class this and they were useless at it, even though we had taught SERS fairly recently. So like, it was interesting, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, they're not ready for exact trick values because they can't do this lovely maths pad resource, yep. um, which is really just multiplying nice, and matching. Yeah. Um, but then um, recapping right angle trick, now I've got that down for one lesson there, but that might take a lot longer or if it's not been taught in year nine, then obviously that's going to have to come first. Um, but yeah, we um, we maybe spend a lesson just making sure they're definitely secure on that. And then I'm then putting exact trig values at this point. Now, you could change the order of this, but what I would do is a lesson on deriving them, which is drawing out some triangles, which I'll come to later, okay. um, so they understand where they came come from, but also during that lesson, there's a Sokotoa or a right angle triangle and, recap. And can I just ask, are you doing this, this is all higher classes? Oh or? yeah, yeah. Um, with foundations here, uh, I haven't taught GCSE foundation on the new spec, and. Um, I know that it's very light touch. They'll basically teach right angle trigonometry and then they yeah. might put it in at the end. But, you know, we uh, we say you don't have to do it. But what I mean by that is if you set at GCSE. Oh, do we do it with all classes? Yeah. Yeah. So it, there's, there's an argument, isn't it, to just sack it off? Yeah, absolutely. I Last year I taught a set two who were all working at, say, grade seven. And this is the kind of. Um, you do it with them. This is, but then this year I'm teaching a set six and they're working at a kind of grade four. Yeah. And I didn't. I didn't derive it no. and I showed them it. I showed them the values and we got them from a calculator. So I said, mm, okay. here's a table to fill in, go through and type in sign 30, write the value yeah. in, type in sign 60, write the value in. We got, we got the table written down. We then did some practice of using those values in, in uh, Sokotoa questions. All right, okay. Um, and they found it really I challenging. It and then I said, I don't want anyone worrying or spending yeah, time on this yeah, yeah. because if it comes up it will only be on the first paper and it will be maybe one mark yes there might be a four mark question but this is not something for you all to focus on yeah it's tough in it that's yeah, yeah. although you know a couple of them picked up a mark okay. on when it came yeah, yeah. up in the mid-year um you know and actually when it comes closer to the exam we'll see how they're going we might come back to it but yeah this is this i'm thinking of a high a okay. high higher five, class five, here. Five. yeah um, then you might want to do a lesson on calculating. So your first lesson is on deriving them and figuring out what on earth they are. And then the second lesson might be, now let's do like a, a, like the ones I showed you earlier, those, those foundation tier questions where you've got a simple right angle triangle and there's a, you need to use sine 30. Yeah, yeah so yeah, that's, because yeah, yeah. that does deepen understanding of right angle trig and it's a way of coming back to it and doing more practice of it, but saying, let's try and do a right angle trig lesson without a calculator now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then I'll probably go on to some uh, right angled problems in general. <laughs> Why you put probs? Just probs. Uh, yeah, it's cool <laughs> unlikely, isn't it? Yeah. Um, including um, exact <laughs> values at that point. So yeah. basically, um, there's a basically yeah, we have three lessons on exact values. Now a lot of teachers will be thinking, I have not got time for that. Like, yeah. um, I mean, you know, this is very much in theory. <laughs> this yeah, is how long we've spent. Of course, of course, of um, course. And actually, now I think about it, I think I've actually, I've, I've got that the wrong way around. When I've said calculations, I think I mean things like sine 30 plus cos 60. Right, yes, that's what I mean. Okay. And then the lesson where we're doing the geometry problems. Geometry stuff, so okay. I think first lesson derive, second lesson play Just with the play numbers, with numbers yeah. like tan 60 multiplied by cos 30 yes. and then the one on. Okay. But basically three lessons that cover those things. Okay. Then we can get on with our oh, sine rule and cosine rule. Of course, yeah. yeah. But the thing about this is, and I've only put one Ooh. sine rule lesson, but you might want two. Yeah. And then I've put one cosine rule lesson, but I took two on that this year. Yeah. The reason I've then put them in is because then you can do, well, I would do my re method selection. So is it sine rule, is it cosine yes. rule? Then I might do one oh, on 3D God, trigonometry. Yeah. But throughout this whole thing, lesson six, seven, eight, nine, you can then bring your exact trig values in. Yeah, so course. you can model an example where you're saying, right, we're doing the sine rule. 
this is how we do sign rule. It's just substitution, basically. Yeah. Oh, let's try a sign rule question yeah. with a sign 30 in it. So yeah, once yeah, you've yeah. introduced it, then you can just bring it in through the rest of your trick teaching. Yes. So it's just an opportunity, isn't it? Half A, B, sign of C course. again. Yep. At that point, you can use a non-calculator example in your lesson. Yep. Um, tough, there's so uh, much, isn't there? Tough unit, that as well, hey? Yeah. Tough for kids. There's yeah. so much going on here, isn't there? Trig graphs. What's this little star doing? The star is to say that I'd revisit it when I do graph ah, transformations. Right, okay, so yeah. I might do trig graphs at this point, but then we do all this in year 10, and in year 11 I teach graph transformations, and it's like they haven't seen trig graphs before at that point. So I'll say, right, let's recap trig graphs, and then we're going to translate them and reflect them. Yeah. So we come back to that. Tough. I mean... Obviously, you'll you'll know far more than me. Tough unit for most year tens. Um, what the whole the whole of this trick yeah. thing? I don't know the sine rule and cosine rule. Okay. It's a lot of substitution. Like they tend, it's okay. Uh, even half a b sine c. Um, I think the three D trigonometry does break a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it breaks um, me. I can't do it. I and can. then, the, but you know, I like I say, I teach a, a class of sort of students working at grade four and. You know, ask them whether they liked sine rule, cosine rule. They they did like it. Okay. Um, they um, did okay in it in their mid year. Okay. Um, okay. You know, nothing massively problem solving based, but yeah, they can. They they were okay with it. It is it is difficult stuff. It's like a let's introduce year ten with like a let's show you all how hard higher GCSE and, is. <laughs> and if they did this in ten, in eleven, you just kind of. Just revising this, or yeah. So th yeah, we we'll, we have it in all of our retrieval throughout. Right, we'll okay. do a revision at the end. Sure. I mean, and then I've put exact values in trig graphs, but it's not. It's not that is really, really your grade nine students. Yeah, That's like okay. if if the value of sine sixty is root three over two. Yep. What's the value of sine? I don't know. Like add one hundred eighty to that. You know, like oh, as in using right, trig graphs, okay, like the wow, sort of stuff okay. you do at A yeah, level. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. only okay. do that with your very, very yeah, yeah. Um, most advanced. And then it, oh, you know gosh. how many sh how many <laughs> teachers don't know about ambiguous yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those who don't know ambiguous cases, where if you use if you do shift sign inverse sign. The calculator gives you the principal value. It will give you the first value of sign, but sometimes, some triangles, there's a second value of sign that works that's obtuse. And yeah. if you look at a trig graph, you can see it. You can't teach that till after you've taught trig graphs no. or students will have no clue, but that is definitely only do it with your yeah. very, very top students. And I, I've recently looked at that with my certificate of further math students as yes. well. Yeah. Isn't there a lot there? It's a hell of a lot, Joe. So Whoa. look, that 14 lessons is like four weeks of teaching. Jeez. Whereas most people will get two weeks to do that. Uh, in my scheme of work, we have three weeks, so we don't do all of those lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot, isn't that? So that, that's why it would make sense maybe to split it over year 10 and 11. Yeah. But I think introducing right angle trig as well would then add another week to that. So yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, I'd stick a load of that in year 11. Yeah, yeah. Well, Anyway, yeah, but yeah it's good, so man. much going on. It's good. Um, hey, uh, this is yeah. So this is from the same survey, and this is just how long people spend on topics. Oh, that's a good question. Um, and I didn't ask. This was Key Stage Three, so I didn't ask how long people spend on trigonometry at GCSE. But yep. you can see how long they spend on trigonometry in Year Nine if they're teaching it in Year Nine, or the first time they introduce it. Just right angle trig. Most teachers are giving mm. it four to eight hours, but there is a decent chunk there in the sort of blue bar who are giving right angle trig four hours or less on first introduction yeah, of it yeah. and that's that is not enough time to go into any depth at all no. but in general most of these responses so suggested that people don't have enough time it's of rush course, rush rush and that's no criticism of the teachers that is the curriculum being yep. too tightly packed it's because trigs in key stage three yeah that's the problem Right, so the point was that if you teach exact trig values early on in your trig sequence, yes. then you can use your exact trig, val trig, exact trig values throughout the teaching. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so that, that. that question there, which is a half A, B, sine C, yeah. that can be in your lesson on half A, B, sine yeah, C, and you yeah. can say, right, this one we're going to do without a calculator because we already know how to do sine 45. It's good that, and then you're constantly revising thirds, fraction yes, operations, yeah. all that. Yeah, Although, but then arguably you could say, oh, I've only got one lesson on half A, B, sine C, and it's going to be tricky enough without me putting this in. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's it's, 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 it's just the timing Tough. that's difficult. Um, that's Don Stewart, yeah, um, yeah. and there are loads, loads of questions there on um, without a calculator using. Um, you can see the angles there. We've got thirties, forty fives, and sixties, yeah. and there's lots of challenge there. Oh, like yeah. this is this is really tricky maths. Like yes, this is, is for, yes. for GCSE level. There's a lot, lot going on here. Um, but AQA certificate and further maths Lovely. has um, also got a lot of this on. It's such a nice qualification, 
and trig can come up on their non-calculated paper. Oh, it's lovely this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, really good yeah. because it's a show that P equals M root seven. Yeah. So we've got, uh, you know, we don't have uh, numerical values on the lengths there. It's a really nice Love question. Uh, it's mainly, but it, like the other ones, it's there's some third manipulation going on. I want to do that and see where the seven pops out. Do yeah, you yeah, You wouldn't think a seven's coming there, No, you wouldn't think a seven's coming out. I'm thinking about that. I've got a... It's this cos it's gonna be cosine rule and it's M M squared. No, I don't know where the seven's come from. I don't know. I'll have to do it. <laughs> it's good enough. I'll have some fun on the train yeah. back. Um and these are more questions from Certificate of Further yeah, Maths. Um yes. and there's just a whole load of lovely stuff here. Lovely for us. But this is why, again, we, we talked in a previous topics for depth about how we both love this qualification. Oh, yeah. We're not being paid to say this. We oh, absolutely, really love, absolutely it, yeah. love it. And the thing I always said to the kids was, so the f I've run this from the very first time it was it, it started with, with Year 11s. And I remember this girl, Jenny, and she was a strong mathematician. This was in the days of A, a star A's and whatever. Yeah. So she was probably going to, on a good day, she'd get an A. Probably you had to put a tenner on it, she'd get a B in a GCSE. Yeah. But I said to her, look, come along to the after school classes. You don't have to take this exam in the yeah. uh, in the further maths thing. But um, it's just going to get you, like, you're going to find the GCSE CERD work, the GCSE yeah. trig work, just so much more accessible yeah. because you're used to doing this. And, yeah. like, it just gets the GCSE mathematicians so much better, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And I mean, preps them for A-level. Yeah, incredible. it was one of the selling points when I when I wrote to students to say, I'm inviting you to do Certificate of Further Maths in Year 11. It's after school. Here's the advantages. And one of the big ones was I said it will secure your grade nine in GCSE. Yeah, that's good. Because it's just like all that um, extra practice of the harder stuff. And suddenly uh, everything clicks together for them because yeah. they're seeing it. You know, in a in a just it's just getting that sort of it's like oh we're doing much harder um, we're doing calculus and you need index laws and you need to know that x to the power of negative one is one over x and they might have been a bit rubbish at yeah, that but exactly. now they really know it because they're doing it in calculus yeah, it's great. so it does it does it's a great qualification yeah, but yeah it. this this will help them definitely um, oh good luck I put into leaving I mean into weaving <laughs> I keep doing this uh, little mistake so into weaving opportunities yeah. Um, you can have exact trig values popping up in other topics, Absolutely. like circle theorems, for example. Like there are places that you can put um, you can put exact trig values, or trigonometry in general yeah. can pop up in other topics. Not as much as say Pythagoras pops up all over the place, but you can certainly bring this in. Is in that other from places. further maths one as well? Um, I, I actually I can't remember. That's I definitely it obviously might it, it might be because circle theorems does come up yeah, on that, doesn't I it? Think it will be it's that. clearly um, AQA. I'm assuming it is further maths. Good nice question. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. yeah, it is actually. I remember now. Yep. It is further maths. Um, so let's talk about the memorising. Ooh, okay. Yep. Now, um, I think <laughs> most sort of uh, most teachers who've been teaching this a while at A level yes. um, will be fans of the, the classic yeah, triangles. The big yeah. Big derives. Yep. Um, so, and interestingly, normally you, you draw an equilateral triangle with side length two. So you just you know draw your yep. equilateral triangle on the board two two and two, split it in half down the middle because that will give you a thirty and a sixty. Yep. And then you know that the middle, uh, the the base has now been split into one and one. Use Pythagoras to work out the height. There's a lot. It's a lot to do, isn't it? And then once you've drawn that, then you can say, right, cos thirty is opposite yeah. over hypotenuse, yeah. and sines. Oh no, adjacent. Adjacent over hypotenuse. You need to work on your I know. Platforms. I meant to say the word sine meant to come out my mouth there, and it's I said cos. <laughs> um, and cos sixty is adjacent over hypotenuse, and you basically go round and work them all out, and yep. it's so straightforward to us as experts, and yes. so very complicated. It's hard, isn't it? Um, and then you've got the one on the right where you draw your um, isosceles um, with side length one. Um, and that gives you your 45s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, they don't have to be side length two and one. You could actually put X's there and you would actually get the same values out. But with people tend to draw these. Uh, yep. Like Don Stewart there says, the two famous triangles. Um, so this is how we derive them. Um, and if I had to work out, say, tan, let's say, tan 30, and I can't remember if it's root three or one mm, over root three, mm. I'd do a quick sketch. Yeah, yeah too, I'll just draw too. that triangle out. Yep. And I'm actually, now I'm teaching GCSE and I'm seeing these a lot, I am getting better at knowing them. So like yeah. I know the I know the two thir the thirties and the sixties cos and sine. Yeah. But um, sometimes the tan. I, I just I just I, I think it's not that I can't memorize them. I just I've never bothered yeah, because I can okay, just work them out. Them yeah. So I would just draw a quick sketch of these. Um, I don't see many students doing that. So no. most students have um, basically when I teach it, I will show them this and I'll say this is how I do it. And I'll say some of you will see other things on the internet and you will use them to yeah, learn. So let me show you okay. some examples of that. 
Um, so oh, this is this is a nice activity where you get them to fill it in as yep. you go through. So Good. that's kind of that's how most people do it. Now, that's <laughs> that's my preferred way. Yeah, I'm with you. But there, um, there are patterns. So you know you've got you uh, you've got um, a half one over root two, three over root two, one, and then now oh, like this is complicated. No, but no, like you. oh let me go back to that. No, so we've got um, the first one is a half root zero. Then it's a half root one. No, then it's a I'm half joking. root two, that's a half not, root three, a half root yeah, four. That's terrible. That's terrible. Well, it's all just a half and then root zero, one, two, three, <sighs> four. I, I mean, I agree it's terrible, but this there is a pattern there. <laughs> like to say it's a half root zero, isn't that awful? <laughs> like, what is that? It's zero. Yeah. Um, okay, let me. So then there's more. There's this thing. You seen this? No. Yeah. So people do this. They write out zero, one, two, three, four. Then they write four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> they do a big square root sign over the top, and then they write the whole thing over two. So if you wanted no, sine 30, no. it's the square root of 1 over 2. And if you wanted sine 90, it's the square root of 4 over 2, which uh, is 1. Yeah. I mean, I know that, like, I can't imagine any teacher liking these things. He's so hard to read, but he's not, it's too much to roll remember. off the tongue. It's not a soccer oh, toe yeah, with yeah. this. Um, and oh, you've seen the hand trick, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no the thing is, talking. the funny thing with the hand trick, because it's like, you know, what is it? I don't even know, because yeah. it's like 0, 30, 45. Yeah, that's it. But... Even like even me, I'm like, what's yeah, the one's next? Zero, thirty, forty-five, sixty, ninety. I, I forget. I they know. they then try and do it on their things. They're like, they miss one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or you use the wrong hand. Yeah, and, you're in big and um, so that is the same kind of thing. So we've got the mathematical way, or we've got the let's just memorize it. But like, look at this. I saw this online. It made me laugh. What the teachers never taught us. Step one. You write out zero, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, zero. What Step two, this? you divide everything by two. Step three, you square root the tops. And finally, oh, hold on, the teachers never taught us how to spell. <laughs> um, finally, you simplify. Like, isn't that, like, I mean, there's a reason the teachers never taught it back, so it's a load of crap. It is. I mean, what is that? I know, there's so much to remember. But all... <sighs> But this is what they're doing. They're going online and they're seeing this stuff all over the internet. And then they're coming and doing, say, um, a mock exam for me. And I see them writing these little tables down. And I never taught them these tables. They're just finding it online. But there you go. So look at what they have to remember there. What goes <laughs> in the top row, the order, sign, oh. then cos, the numbers in each row, the steps, first of all, root, then divide by two, or, you know, um, how to derive tan, because tan's not on there. Tan is sine yeah. over cos, which <laughs> I don't even learn at GCSE. And then the math skills they need are the simplification yeah. of it. Whereas here, what do they have to remember? Which two triangles? I appreciate they have to remember which two triangles yeah. to draw, yeah. but then the math skills they need are Pythagoras and right angle trigonometry, which is actual maths. So obviously our preference is always for the right and not for the one on the left, which makes us all a bit sad. It's one of the worst go. things I've ever seen, that thing on the left. <laughs> I'll just say that on the record. It's horrendous. Yeah, it's, it's upsetting, isn't it? But there you go. So this is okay. what's happening. Yeah, is, we okay. know this is what's happening. And this is why it's a tragedy to put this, particularly on foundation tier, because they should not be spending time on that thing on the left when they should be revising proper maths. Yeah. You know, we, this is not something we want them spending their time doing um, just for the sake of one mark. You know, it's just, it's sad, isn't it? You know what? I mean, I know we're not, we've still got more to talk about here, but at this stage, I'm, I'm completely changing my mind on this, you know. I'm leaning towards just sack this whole thing off. For oh, you think don't apart, teach it? Yeah, for anyone apart from grade eight, grade nine. I just don't think really? it's worth it. Maybe, yeah, but I find it very hard to send students into an exam when I haven't taught them. Better than it. send them in with all that crap no, bombing around in their maybe, head. Maybe, maybe. What's don't know. this? And they got their fingers out and stuff. <laughs> Jeez. Because <laughs> they, they can only remember so much right I know, this. I know. Sack it off, I'm saying. Um, anyway, they get one so mark for stating a correct value. Look at the work they have to do for that <laughs> mark. <laughs> God. Unless they've actually properly memorised I mean, them. And the other thing is, you just, if you're a gambler, which I am, yes. you just teach the kids... Sign 30, cos 60. It's probably, yeah, yeah, probably yeah. one of them's coming yeah. up, right? Yeah, and I think um, that Stick was something, I think down. everyone was laughing last year where it, sign, it was sign 30 that came up and that's what a lot of teachers probably do. Probably all right, yeah. But, um, yeah. It's not quite the in-depth we're looking for, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Could be a quick video for us, though. Just yeah. put sign 30 equals R. Yeah, See you teaching later. that, we're okay. done. So let's look at some, we uh, let's try and be positive about this. All right, because I'll like, try, I'll try. I think there are, it is, for the top end students, there's some real, okay, th there's some really on, nice stuff. Go on. Um, so first of all, um, Boss Maths has some interesting activities on how you derive um, the zeros in the 90s, because obviously 
Sign zero and sign 90, they're not coming out of the two famous triangles. No, not. You're only getting the 30, 45, Correct. and the 60. Correct. So either you show them the, the zeros and the 90s from a trig graph, and you yes. can't show them that you get trig graphs, or you're just telling them what they are, um, or you do what this activity. So I won't talk for this activity now, but he's basically sort of talking about um, the as the side tending to zero and what the and what the lengths get close. But you have yeah. to have a really good understanding of trig to understand this. Yes. But so what I do is I don't do this approach, but I say um, I only teach them 30, 45, and 60 from the famous triangles. And then when I teach trig graphs, I say look, sine zero is zero, and I go yeah, from that. Okay. But yeah, there's, okay. a, there's an activity there if people are looking okay. for that sort of thing. We'll love a bit of boss um, so. Yeah. And then we have um, we have an activity from uh, Brilliant, or various activities from Brilliant. So if anyone's ever looking for challenge, brilliant.org is a oh, really good website. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, there, there's all sorts of stuff on there. Like I've just shown a few examples there, but there's some nice questions on Brilliant. So always have a look on there if you're looking for challenge. And MathsPad, oh, MathsPad is always yeah, good. Correct. But yeah, this is, look at, look at, they've got the whole range on this. So they've got, first of all, derive them and fill in the table. Yep. Notice how they haven't put the zero and 90 on the table. Because yes. you can't get them from the, yes. um, so quite often the tables you fill in for that have zero and 90. And you he's like, how it. do you get them? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then you've got um, calculate the triangle um, values or the lengths, which is, you know, just using the trig values in a yeah. you know, geometric context. And then you've got the simplify, say, that's four, literally science, all you need. That's everything. Though. That's, that's the whole, that's yeah, everything you need. Yeah, so MathsPad have kind of got the whole lot covered, but they've also got loads on it. This is all MathsPad. So they've got, um, they've got some really challenging stuff here. They've got true or false. They've got um, odd one out, which is kind of, like if you look at that odd one out at the bottom right, that yep. is, that's, you need to know trig graphs to do yeah, that. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yep, it's good. There's all sorts of stuff you on there. You use that with A-level kids, right? Yeah, that's yeah, good definitely. Um, and they've also got some really challenging puzzles. So there's lots and lots of challenge on MathsPad on nice. exact trig values. Like it. Um, if you look at that, like that's tricky. You have to substitute. Wow. But they're like enlargements, aren't they? So like we know that what was that one? Is that uh, oh. that's sine because it's op so if you look at the first one there, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Yep. So you know you should be getting an answer of root three over two. Don't bring me into this. You're saying that you know this. We I'm don't so have sure. root. Yeah, we so don't sure. have root three over two there, so we have to find something equivalent. Yeah, so that's that's okay. really challenging. Yeah, that's good. Um, this is John Stewart, isn't yeah. it? Lovely. So this one, this is a great question because you're working out um, the exact purple line distance. Yep. So you could find, say, the whole. First of all, see the big triangle and find the whole distance across the bottom. Yes. Then use the little triangle with a sixty in and find the little, di the good. shorter distance, and then subtract because. Then you can use do right angle trig with this. Yeah, you shouldn't need to use um, shouldn't need to use sine or cosine rule here. He gets a love heart as well. Don. Yeah, because it's, it's nice. Don. It's yeah, nice. he does. Um, the lovely thing about Don, like, this is quite challenging from Don because like it says like find the perimeter, um, and it, you have wow. to you have to yep. add surge, you have to use exact trig values. But look, just because Don is so wonderful, look at the answers. Yeah, <laughs> oh, isn't know. that nice? And those he bottom two are the same doing. as well. He knows yeah. What he's doing. So satisfying to get this, those lovely answers. But yeah, he's got tons of stuff on it. And including, if you look at that middle one, and bear in mind, I don't know mm. when he made that, but I feel like he he preempted the fact that we were going to have a load of GCSE <laughs> questions yeah. that look like that. And he he's already done it. So he's good. Yeah, loads of good stuff there. Um, and then, yeah, just, uh, just finally looking at sort of problem solving. That top left one is Don. That's really, really challenging. That would be your very, very wow, brightest yes. students. Like that's yes. that's really tricky. And then that you see that one there, question two. That's not challenging. Cos forty five <laughs> times cos yeah. forty six yeah, times yeah, cos forty seven, yeah. all the way up to that. And then if they just realise that what is which is it cos ninety is yeah. zero. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That bottom one is um senior maths challenge. Like, you know, so we're looking at really, really yeah, stretching the very yeah. strongest students here. Um, but there's loads of resources and like uh, if you look on resourcehot.com, my website, then everything's like there's there's loads of stuff on there. I've got tons of uh, interesting resources for um, for exact trig values and trig and everything like that. So there's plenty of stuff around. Mm -hmm. But I don't think teachers are going to make a lot of use of them because no one is going to spend like four lessons on exact trig values because we just haven't yeah. got time. And it's, it's essentially, it's going to be, what, a maximum probably of five marks on one paper. But, like, if you have a strong class, yeah. you are you do get good bang for your buck because you are revising a lot of other subjects Yes, absolutely. It. Yeah, because you've got your thirds and your geometry. Bring, yeah, yeah. Bring tricky yeah, stuff so together. I do see a lot of value in it, but I also know that we haven't got time to go into great depth on this. So, yeah. But, yeah, I, I certainly think that the lesson where you're sort of saying sine 30 times cos 60 or whatever, that's all third work. Yes. So good revision of thirds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like I say, doing a lesson where you're doing 
say right angle triangle problems mm. that involve um, mm. exact trig values is good revision of right angle triangle. Yes, yes, so yes. yeah, there's definitely there are definitely benefits to it, um, but um, I'm not not so much on foundation tier and like you say on higher tier perhaps not for everyone. Yeah. Um, but I, like I said, I still showed my grade four students it, but I didn't spend that long on it. And I told them not, not to be, I don't want it to be a cause of stress for them. And yeah. I don't want them to spend ages memorizing them. No, no, They've got no. better things to do exactly. with their time. Yeah. Exactly. So my kind of final thoughts on this then is like, with exact trig values, give it some time if you can on higher, but if you can't, you don't know, don't don't stress about it. Um, use it to recap and deepen understanding of trigonometry and thirds, and order the lessons to maximise those opportunities yes. to interweave. Yes. Where you can say, um, you know, if I put if I if I put this before I do cosine rule, then I can bring it in, yeah. or like just basically just think about on and I need to do it after thirds, and I need to like there's all sorts of ordering that makes sense here but on foundation i'm saying consider whether it's worth the time Correct. and their brain space prioritize the topics that are important to them um so yeah that's that's a kind of judgment call for a foundation teacher yeah and i'm gonna say i'm gonna be blunt here i'm gonna say foundation 10 minutes max just tell them a few values and then chuck them in a few do nows going forward see if they remember and yeah. if they do great higher tier i would not go near this apart from just showing them a few of those values with anyone unless they were aiming for best case grade seven but i don't think i'm even doing it with them because it's just it's kids don't have an unlimited amount of attention memory mm. and stuff the stress that this can cause i just think it's a bad i think it's a bad thing is if they're on a grade kids. seven or above then they're potentially doing a level and you know they really should have seen they should have done as much gcse in depth as they can grade seven above are your a level students but it's not it's it's it's, it's kind of like a zero-sum game, right? Like, mm. you've got a finite amount of curriculum time. Yeah. So what do you want? Spend five lessons on this or five lessons getting them really secure on fractions, yeah. algebraic simplification, straight line yeah. graphs, all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, I agree. Tricky yeah. one. So it's a funny one. And then I, I, funny one. I'm not saying I don't like it because I love any, yeah. I love all of this. Me I love too. doing it myself. But certainly, um, um, and there's some fantastic questions, particularly in those certificate of further maths, yeah, like I really agree. nice questions. But yeah, a bit of a funny topic and certainly one that's um, a big generator of discussion amongst math teachers. Generally, agreement, like there's not many people who are saying it's important, it's on foundation tier. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. certainly, it's something where um, it gives us something to talk about in terms of curriculum. And we should be talking about our curriculum yes. and we should be um, thinking about the appropriateness of our curriculum because it's important that math teachers do that kind of thing. Nice, Joe Morgan. Nice. Well, that brings us to the end of this Topics in Depth. So a few things to say. Uh, firstly, big thank you to AQA for sponsoring this and making this Topics in Depth possible. Uh, secondly, thank you for you guys for watching. Uh, if you found this useful, we've got loads of other Topics in Depth sessions that we've done over the years. So uh, check those out. Use them um, as you will. A reminder, you can access all the resources from today just uh, in the link below the video. You can download and use them with your colleagues and with your, with your students. And just a little plug from me and Joe. Joe's insisted we put this on. I thought it was a bit cocky, <laughs> to be honest with you. But uh, Joe's got a book out, Mathematical Methods. It's an absolutely brilliant book. Shows you loads of different ways of approaching topics. And it's always good to show kids one way of doing something and then say, let's look at another way that gets the same answer. Why does it get the same answer? What do you prefer? And so on. And I've got a book out as well, uh, Tips for Teachers. So hope you found that useful. Joe, always a pleasure speaking to you. And we'll see you on the Topics in Depth again soon.